Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to Cyber Secret TV. I've been planning uh, since long about like you know discussing something about the AWS. I know I started that playlist and then never got a chance to come back with some uh, new video. So this week I'm gonna uh, actually came up to my mind like this is very very important topic. Uh, anyone who is working or uh, uh, for like you know in the AWS or you will ever be working in the AWS or maybe doing the security review or implementing. Uh, are you if you're working as a DevOps or you're working as a developer, you need to understand this. This is very very basic and very critical. So that's why I wanted to uh, like share with you how the IAM policies evaluate happens in the back end uh, and and we will discuss the logic we will dis discuss the example we will discuss like you know step by step how the evaluation process happens how, what is the decision tree and we'll also discuss what's the implicit versus explicit deny like how does i am policy make the decision whether to grant access or do not or allow or deny the access so that is all we're going to discuss in this video so this is i'm very excited about this one i hope you guys learn a lot from this video all right so let's get started so agenda, as I said, like you know, we're gonna discuss what is the IAM policy. Uh, our, our focus is going to be mostly on the policy evaluation logic and the example on how this logic applies. So uh, let's uh, get this straight. Like uh, probably you guys all know what the IAM policy is, but the policy is anything which is attached can be attached to the user group of users or a role. So when you go to the your AWS console, uh, if you go to the IAM and go to the policies, you'll have a bunch of policies. And when you create a new user or a group, you can attach those permissions or policies to the individual or group of users or a role. So that's your IAM policy. And that's how user can access something or cannot access something, so based on what, what policies are attached. Now, the example of the uh, IAM policy is something like this. So uh, you have like you no know, statement, you have policy name. This is the effect. That means whether to allow or deny the access based on the uh, actions uh, decides it here. Uh, so actions are, for example, in this case, S3 list all my buckets. So and head bucket. So these are the actions are allowed. Whoever has this policy attached to the maybe it's the user or the group of users. And the resource star, that means on all the resources. And resources, your S3 bucket, your EC2 instance, your SNS, resources, anything, any service within the AWS. So star means you have these actions allowed on any resources, right? So just remember this. These are very important terminologies. Fact, action, and resource. There's one more uh, tag here, which is principle. And the principle is whether your principle matches to the principal mentioned the uh, policy uh, and that's how uh, like you know but but we'll we'll see that in example okay uh, there are other policies as well other than like you know identity based policies there is a resource based policy which is attached to the resource then you have i am permission boundaries uh, uh, which are like you know of course as you can imagine that's a permission boundary you cannot go beyond the boundary then you have service control policy that's part of the organization. So if you apply this service control policy to your, uh, uh, let's say, master account, the policy will propagate itself or inherited by all the child accounts or member accounts. Then you have session policies. So, but we are not going to discuss in detail like what are these policies uh, because I know uh, we are main concern about how the law, how the policies are getting evaluated. So. Uh, these are very critical uh, uh, topics or like you know bullets you need to remember aws always follows the least privilege and least privilege means a default is denied so any if any user wants to access something by default aws does not give the access so if the user does not have any permission attached or any policy attached then the access is denied now explicit deny always trumps and allow. So for example, let's say you have conflicting policies. Uh, the user has a one policy attached, I am policy, and then there is an S3 policy. There is a policy attached in the S3 bucket policy, which says, yeah, I would allow the access to any user. And in the user uh, policy, it says, I would deny access to that bucket. Then uh, deny always trumps 
and allow. So the user will not grant an act, uh, will not be able to access that bucket S3. So if you have conflicting policy and if you have one deny, one allow, deny always trumps and allow. So do remember that. If there is a third condition where there is there are like you know three or four policies attached and none of the policies says allow or none of the policies even say denied. So for example, the policies or like you know the resource does not match or I am action does not match or let's say user does do not have any policy attached, then by default uh, it will be denied. Now don't worry, we will see example for each of these conditions. And then there is a no deny, and at least there is one allow. So if there are four policies attached, and at least there is one policy which says allow, and none of the policies that says deny, then and only then access will be allowed. Now to simplify this one, I have come up with this uh, like you know graph. Probably you can print this out or you can memorize somewhere. So the logic always starts at deny, and then. Uh, AWS or the IAM will evaluate all the policies. Suppose there are five policies attached. So it will evaluate one by one each policy. So for example, it will start with one policy. And it will say, is there an explicit deny? If it's yes, then policy is denied, access is denied. It will go back. And and actually, like you know, the workflow ends here. But let's say there's other policy. It says, is there an explicit deny? The answer is no. Is there an explicit allow? If the answer is yes, then the access will be allowed. If no, then access will be denied, right? So this is a very straightforward. You always follow the least privilege principle. Now let's take an example real quick. So suppose uh, there is a user called Bob, and he wants to uh, get some user information. So he's trying to uh, call an API, I am get user and now it has a bunch of policies attached. So we're gonna evaluate each of those policies and determine whether the access should be allowed or denied, right? Uh, so here's the principle of that user. So uh, each uh, account has its own service principle. So based on that, uh, you can, uh, in the policy, it also matches whether the principle matches, or caller of the principle matches with the policy or not. Then we have action, which is, of course, I'm get user, resource, which is this one, and context. Uh, so this information uh, are kept by the IAM and not uh, visible to us, but yeah, these are these are like you know some sort of uh, information which are uh, which are available to the IAM while performing the evaluation. So suppose uh, there is a uh, policy. Uh, so this is the same information which we saw in the previous slide, right? And this is the first policy which is attached. And the policy name is allow it to be get, a fact is allow, principle is this, action dynamo be get item, and this is the resource. So first thing, what it's gonna do is it's gonna match the principle. If the principle matches, okay, that's good. So it will go further. It will say dynamo db get item, and here we have action I am get user. This does not match, but that doesn't mean this is denied because the action does not match and there is a fact is allowed so we will say there is, there, there is not going to be uh, any decision made on, uh, based on this evaluation all right now we're gonna move to the policy two uh, there is another policy which which is attached first off it's gonna match the principle and I think the principle is the same now we're gonna ev uh, match the action and it seems like action is also the same here there is a get user, here there is a get user. Perfect. Now we're gonna match the resource. So he wants to uh, find the get user on Bob. And here the resource is star. That means yes, you can do this, you can perform this action on any resource. So this is again, it's gonna match. Next, it's gonna check the condition. And here it says string equals resource uh, rack department one, two, three, or four, five, six. A resource tag actually there's a typo here but yeah so but it matches because the, with this user in the context it says four five six so based on this evaluation it it, it finally says oh there, is there an allow or deny and we found that the policy says access allowed so based on this 
we we got the policy which matches and it says yeah effect allow now the question is should we stop here uh actually the answer is you might be thinking answer is yes but no answer is no and why because as i said if there is even one policy which says deny then it trumps everything so if there are few more policy left out we still need to evaluate all of this until we find at least one deny and if we don't then the uh, the decision will be yes allow the access otherwise deny so let's uh, keep moving now we're going to do the policy number 3 evaluation here it says affect allow now does it make sense to evaluate this policy no because uh, uh, we have already made the decision that we can allow the uh, access so there's no like you know it's not going to impact or influence our decision so we are not going to process this policy let's skip all right next we have another policy which says affect deny that's good let's match the principle yes it matches let's match the action yes uh, both the actions are the same get user resource uh, here it says star and resource says yes uh, that's for the user bob that means yes it's allowed because resource star is always greater than particular resource now we're going to evaluate the condition and here it says string not equals resource tag project uh, and principal tag project if these are not equal then deny the access and here we as you can see resource tag and principal tag both are same secret that means this condition is not applicable that means this policy is not applicable and that means we cannot make decision based on this policy and this was the last policy which was attached for this user so based on all the evaluation what we found so far is there was a matching allow we did not find any matching denies and what does that mean that means access is allowed right so if we go back to the decision tree you would see yes if there is a matching allow and there is no deny then we allow the access so uh, i i said so many times like implicit versus explicit deny so uh, so the difference is if the policy contains deny then that is called explicit deny so we are explicitly denying user from uh, giving access to something so for example if i want a user to not allow access to production ec2 instance then i would attach explicit deny permission to it and the user will not be able to attach while the implicit deny is policy itself does not contain deny but it is also uh, there is no policy which also says allow that means it's an implicit deny then we are not we are, we are not denying user to access it but we are not even not allowing user to access something that means Uh, we are still going to deny the user so uh, things to remember is always follow list privilege so by default everything is denied unless you find at least one policy which says allow and there is no policy which says deny and then and only then the user will be granted access so i wanted to share this with you uh, because this is very uh, important to learn and this is also actually evaluation logic is also available on the public aws documentation uh, which you can read through they also have a bunch of examples and they also uh, tell you the different policies and how the different policies works and uh, like you know how the um, evaluation happens and and some definition and and all sort of thing so i would highly recommend going through that i'll, I'll put that link into the description and also uh, if you if you have any other like you know comments or thoughts uh, please uh, let me know i can also learn from that uh, if you have any particular questions uh, feel free to ask me uh, down in the comment section make sure do not post any sensitive data and i and make sure to uh, subscribe the channel and hit the thumbs up button if you like this video let me know if you uh, want to uh, learn about more about aws i can m make more videos about the aws i just don't know if the people are interested uh, uh that's it uh, that's it from me uh, uh thank you for for watching and and i'll see you guys next week